Well, for a lot of us living in the borderland, border barriers are really nothing new. Yeah, there are currently 188 miles of different border barriers in the El Paso sector, from the legacy chain link fence to steel fences and beyond. In the first of a two part special report, KTSM 9 News reporter Susie Castillo takes us on a trip to give you a closer look at the different barriers in our own backyard along the southern U.S. border. Walking toward famed Mount Cristo Rey, there's no sign of the issue still dividing the country, which partially shut down the government for a month. So the barrier is meant to be exactly that. It's to be an obstacle for somebody that wants to come illegally into the United States. They're going to face this obstacle and they're, they're going to have to get through it to come in illegally. Well, the mountain is just that. It's a natural barrier. In 1993, the U.S. Border Patrol launched Operation Hold the Line. It was designed to make agents more visible along the border, a kind of vehicle wall. It was open. All of this was, there was nothing here. Silvestre Reyes was chief of the El Paso Border Patrol sector at the time. He ordered the blockade. So I came up with uh, moving the agents right up on the line and going from chasing and arresting to acting as uh, a force of deterrence. The chain link fence is still on a small portion of the border, but it is all being replaced by the bollard fence. The chain link is not durable. Uh, somebody can just make a hole and come across. One area of that fence ended up gathering trash and sand, shifting the ground. At one point, the ground was taller on the Mexico side. Uh, on the south side, people would stand there and the, and the thing would be chest high. And the agents would be on the ground because the dirt build would be looking up. The fence would be over. And then there are mesh fences, which are also easy to look through. But if you look at them closely, the mesh doubles up, which makes it harder to cut through. In 2008, when Victor Mancades was El Paso's Border Patrol chief, the stronger fences started being built. This is that fence is not designed to stop every single person. What it does, it does filter who's going to cross through, uh, over a fence. But it, more importantly, though, it provides law enforcement a, a, the ability to respond to an incursion. In some cases, the bollard fence was put in place to allow for water, sand, and even trash to flow through. It's the hardest of all fences to cut through. The steel beams are filled with cement and rebar. In the more rural areas with rugged terrain and not a home for miles, you can find vehicle barriers. Uh, if somebody does decide to walk across, we have a lot more time for us to uh, find the entry and uh, react to the entry to make the apprehension. Each piece of the border barrier is a little different from the last. What do you think now, like when you see the kids right on the other side of the fence? First of all, we're... Uh, those of us on this side are very fortunate we're in the U.S. and not in Mexico. Susie Castillo, KTSM 9 News. Glad to see her sort all that out. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, coming up on uh, Monday at 10, we're going to have a full report on why former Border Patrol chiefs say there was a need for border barriers and also what they think about President Trump's border wall proposal. All right, Monica.